the first thing we want thing we're going to do is we're going to change 0 0.75 to a reduced fraction. So when we look at this, the zero tells us we don't have any whole numbers, so we won't write any whole numbers down. The 0.75 is our fractional part. So we're going to write the 75 as our numerator. And our denominator will be the place value of the 5. The 5 is in the hundreds place, so we'll put this over 100. Or you could just go tenths, hundreds but it will be 75 hundredths. Now since I said I wanted a reduced fraction, we want to reduce this. You could start off and reduce by fives, but I think 25 will go into each part, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce with 25. 75 divided by 25 is 3, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. So the decimal 0 0.75 means the very same thing as the fraction 3 fourths. Let's look at another one. Let's change 4. Let's move this one up so we can see it a little bit better. Let's change 4.0550 to a mixed number and a reduced fraction. Okay, this one does have a whole number, so I would write down the 4. That's my whole number. And then when I go to the decimal part, I look and see what number I saw there, and I see 550. And because I have four decimal places, I'm going to have ten thousands. Or you could say this last zero is in the ten thousands place. So I would write down ten thousand. So I have four and five fifty ten thousands. Now that's my mixed number, but it's not reduced. So let's go ahead and reduce that mixed number. First thing I'd like to do is mark a zero off of each. So I have 4 and 55 over 1,000 now. And then I know both of those are divisible by 5. So that would make my... I'm still going to have my 4. But that's going to make my fractional part. 55 divided by 5 would give me 11. And 1,000 divided by 5 would give me 200. So I have 4 and 11 two hundredths. So that's the way I'd want to leave it if I was going to leave it as a mixed number. Now, if, if I wanted to leave the whole thing as one big reduced fraction, I could change it back to an improper fraction. 200 times 4 would give me 800, plus the 11 would be 811. And my denominator is 200. So the 4.0550 would either change to 4 and 11 two hundredths, if you wanted to leave it as a mixed number, or 811 over 200, if you want to leave it as an improper fraction. Now I'd like for you to do some practice problems. Number one, write 103.0715 in words. Number two, write 74 and 66 ten thousandths in digits. Number three, write 236.1287 in expanded form. Number four, change 0 0.040 to a reduced fraction. Copy these problems down. Once you get them copied, cut the tape off and work the problems. When you think you have them done correctly, cut the tape back on to check your answers.
Here are the answers to the practice problems. Number 1, 103, and 715 ten thousandths. Number 2, 74 decimal zero zero six six. Number 3, 200 plus 30 plus 6 plus one tenth plus two hundredths plus eight thousandths plus seven ten thousandths. Number four, one twenty-fifth. If your answers disagree with any of these, stop the tape and go find some help from a tutor or an instructor. The next thing we'd like to do is to order some decimal numbers. We'd like to decide which of two decimal numbers is larger. Which is larger? Three point five or three point five hundred? Now this is a place where you have to be mighty careful. Many times students will look and just because they see three digits over here they'll automatically assume that the second one is larger. But let's examine what these numbers really mean. If we change this back to a fraction, this is actually 3 and 5 tenths. This one is 3 and 5 hundred. It's got three decimal places, so it's thousands. So we have 3 and 5 tenths and 3 and 5 hundred thousands. If we wanted to reduce this one, one thing we could do is not two zeros off the top and two zeros off the bottom. As soon as we did that, we'd have three and five tenths. And then the two would look exactly the same. And we could actually keep on going and reduce them and get three and a half and three and a half. So neither one of those numbers is larger. Actually, 3.5 is equal to 3.500. Those extra zeros on the end just change our denominator. They don't really change the numbers. You can always add more zeros on the end of a decimal or take zeros off the end of a decimal without changing things. You're just changing your denominator. Let's look at another example. Suppose we want to compare, let's move this up here, so we have all the other stuff up there. Let's compare .34 and .4. Now, one way to compare these is to make sure they have the same number of decimal places. So, since this one has two decimal places, if I want to make the other one have two decimal places too, I can just add a zero on the end. doesn't change anything. Four tenths that I originally had means the very same thing as forty hundredths. I can reduce 40 hundredths down to 4 tenths. So I can always add extra zeros. Once I add the zero, then you can easily tell that 0.34 is smaller than 0.40. And so adding zeros in there will help you compare your two numbers. So the original question of which was larger this was your larger number, even though originally it only had one decimal place. Another way to compare those numbers is to start and go place by place. If you'll compare tenths, this one has only three tenths, where this one has four tenths. Since this one has three tenths and this one four tenths, the first one has to be smaller. Okay, I'm going to put what we just said about the zeros 
into a rule and if you need to write the rule down, if you'll do that. 